Hello world, this is Jeffrey, jgb 146 Blake, here for Team Level 5, and we have Harrison Grandish on the line, and we're going to be talking to Harrison about the deck that he kind of kicked some butt with this weekend. Uh, he's... so, l let me tell you a little lead-in story here. In, uh, in Denver, Harrison comes up to me and he says, you know... Next format, I think that Sylvalia is going to be good, but I don't know what the partner is going to be. And I looked at him, and I'm like, fighting's not going anywhere next quarter. Are you on crack? But uh, <laughs> I, I think my, my actual response was, if you say so, I hope it's good, but I don't think it will be. because You, you sure did. That was very accurate. <laughs> little, little known secret. Uh, I won, well, not won. The first cup that I topped was playing a Sylvalia metal deck. Uh, a year and a half ago, um, I got to third place with that deck, and it holds a special place in my heart. So, uh, definitely it was a was... cool deck too. Like, it, like it was very, very different. Like that toolbox was pretty, pretty crazy. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. anyway, flash forward year and a half, um, and Harrison's on here with a different Sil Valley toolbox deck that uh, handles the new meta. And part of the power of it comes from the fact that so many other types have become so prevalent that fighting is starting to fall away. Uh, mm -hmm. They can't keep up. And that's what we want. <laughs> so, uh, without any further ado, let's actually dig into what the deck's all about. You can see the Sil Valley, and you can see that there's lightning. And, and that's basically the idea, right? Yeah, it's there's a lot of elements to it. Like, I realized the how valuable Zapdos and how powerful that card is in the format, and I realized that uh, my initial thought with the deck was Silvalli so with Zapdos, and you just have essentially you'll just have two Zapdos in play, each with a Lightning Energy or a Stadium in play, and then you could just rotate between the two Zapdos without having to dig for card switching cards with uh say jirachi like it mm -hmm. deck typically did and can kind of took out that random chance of sure. zapdos in general and but then i was like all right well he's also a stage two so you're gonna kind of like t like one. down tempo or like early game so and you're also gonna need to dig for cards for it too so like in sense jirachi still gets you the Silvalli part of the engine too as well as the switching engine for the Zapdos. And even in, uh, another benefit to it is you can dig for the memory cards, uh, depending on your matchup. Uh, so fighting or water memory. Uh, and then we can talk more on the memories, you know, as far as matchup spreads go um, later. But as far as in this list, that's what I went for. Uh, but it digs for the Electro Power, the Switch cards, the Setup cards. So Jirachi really helps out the Savali part of the engine as well. And then the Savali actually helps out uh, the free retreat with gyro unit. Uh, so Jirachi doesn't always have to have an escape rope. Oh, I timed out. Um, <laughs> on my TCGO. But uh, it, the free retreat with gyro unit, you don't necessarily have to pivot off of a, uh, a free retreat uh, with a skateboard. You can just pivot without using Stellar Wish uh, off of a Jirachi if you need to uh, in certain pitches. Um... So it just adds a lot of utility uh, together. Like there's just a whole lot of syner synergy between the two, uh, or the three archetypes per se. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, before we get too far down to just describing the overall, let's, I guess, dig in to some of the details about the deck. Uh, and just run through the Pokemon lineup real quick. So, so Valet, as, as Harrison has been mentioning, I don't, we started to see an uptick in Silvalli's play, uh, but for those of you who aren't familiar, Silvalli gives all basic Pokemon free retreat. Period. There's no... The, Absol doesn't do anything about it. Um, Power Plant can mess you up, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, I think, but uh, starting out, like, as long as the ability's in play and you have a Silvalli somewhere on the field, all of your basics have free retreat. That's cool. He also has an attack for three colorless energies, and he has a stage one, uh, meaning you can use triple acceleration energy if it 
fits with what you're doing in the deck. Uh, to use Turbo Drive, it hits for 120, which is a pretty good number in a lot of situations. Uh, we'll talk about more of those coming up too when we talk about matchups. Uh, and in addition to that damage, he also will attach basic energy from your discard pile. His GX costs, again, three colorless energy, so it's you know just the same cost as Triple your Triple available. And it's yep. basically like interrupt GX's attack, right? Um, yep, Dangerous Rogue. Dangerous Rogue, except it has a better name, because it's only one word, Rebel. <laughs> Rebel. <laughs> so Indeed. that's Savali in a nutshell. And one of the things that makes the card powerful is that you can attach different memories as tools to it. And that changes its typing, so that it can hit for weakness for almost whatever you decide to tech for in the meta. And mm -hmm. throughout its lifetime... Right now we have... Four, four options uh, right now with psychic or sorry five with uh, lightning psychic fighting uh, fire and grass are currently what you have and memories water. for and water my apologies six I forgot to mention that one yep. so I mean six different types that you could theoretically have hitting weakness on uh, you wouldn't want to necessarily exactly. do all of them but you can also get some of the perks of those types so, for instance, if you attach yes. an electric energy you, or an electric memory, you could then use electro powers to power up attacks from Savala. Exactly. Uh, anyway, moving on. And so, it, I, I, I do want to touch a little bit on that when you use the memories, because I feel like that is something to think about when you are playing Savala. Uh, okay. You have, uh, if you do go with the lightning uh, memory, if you do that, uh, and paired with Electro Power, that's really good for a meta that is kind of big HP stage twos or big HP stage ones. Uh, so if you're up against, say, like that Nido Queen deck or something like that, or Vickavolt, um, hitting that 150, or sorry, yeah, 150 uh, with a single Electro Power with a Savali is actually really good too. So uh, he has a lot of utility for meta depending things. So that's super sick. Yeah, definitely. And, th and that's that's the appeal for me too is you can tech for whatever meta you're in right shortly after I was playing my Savali build it actually shifted to be a very fighting heavy meta so I shifted from being a metal focused Savali deck to being a psychic focused deck I took out all my mm -hmm. psychic memories I still played the fighting memories to counter Zorks but I just played psychic type attackers and yep. that let the deck still hold its own and do really well even though fighting became pretty big uh, but we're not here to talk about me we're here to talk about Harrison so we'll continue <laughs> delving into his deck he had in addition to the 2-2 two -two Savali line he had a 1-1 one -one Zeb Stryka which I assume is just yep. for extra draw power correct uh, the other thing too I did want to touch base a little bit with the uh the Blitzel decision. Okay. Uh, you have, and people, I was expecting to get some ridicule when people saw it on the bench. They'll be like, why are you playing the 60 HP Blitzel? Um, <laughs> del delivery dash. Like, legit delivery dash. Um, you get two Electro Powers for a single attachment. Like, that's incredible. If you're playing second and you open Blitzel and you don't have other options, I'd rather do that than do 10 damage or whatever the heck the other one has. Oh, definitely. Um, and, like, the 60 versus uh, 70 HP argument doesn't work here because if you're up against a Zorark deck that's got a Dugong available, you're not going to bench Blitzel. You're just going to put another Jirachi into play. You're going to wait to put your Blitzel out after, until you've knocked out all of their bench sniping options. Sure. Um, so this, I think, is the best play if you're going to play Blitzel with a lightning-based deck. Otherwise, yeah, go ahead and play the 70 HP one. There's no reason to play this one over that one. But if you're playing a lightning-based deck, I think this is the Blitzel, because you could just outplay uh, potential situations. Did it come up? No. Is that potential there? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Standard is a Trico with the Sprint ability. Draw four, discard your hand, or well, discard your hand, yes. draw four. Super good. Uh, sometimes you need to dig for multiple pieces. 
uh, if you need to get a double colorless and a memory or like Guzma and a switch, uh, extra electro powers, whatever you need, uh, gives you that potential to, to get that combination. Definitely. We've got all three of the major Cocos. Got the Flying Flip yeah, yeah. Coco. Uh, so, talk to me about this. See most so of the, the one, flip? the one flying flip Coco. So I have played the variants. Like on Saturday, I played the triple acceleration variant uh, mm -hmm. with Savali. Uh, but this op uh, this weekend, I or on Sunday, I decided I wanted to go for the double colorless build uh, because I wanted to have something that was good in the mirror match against uh, the Beast uh, variant of Zapdos okay. and Zapdos flying flip Coco. Yeah, Zap Zapdos. Coco does have that availability to you. So um, you get double colorless energy as an extra attack or like a single energy attachment to do flying flip. Uh, an electro power puts it up to 100 damage against Zapdos. Um, so if they use the uh, rainbow energies, you'll get a one hit knockout on that. And then you put the other Zapdos down to uh, 90, um, which in theory, if they don't knock out your Coco, which they have to dig for an Electro Power and a Switching Card to knock out the Coco, otherwise you can get another Electro Power knockout on another Zapdos, and then all the rest of the Zapdos that they might have in play are going to be single shot, and you don't have to dig for Electro Power. So if Coco sticks for uh, two flips, you essentially win the matchup without having to dig for Electro Powers. Nice. Um, so it essentially is a single card that can out the matchup. Um, and if they brick, and if you get four flips off, then you're just knocking out all the Jirachis and you just win the matchup for free. Um, alternatively, against other matchups with Pokemon that have 130 HP, um, it allows you to knock them down into range for an Electro Power on a Zapdos as well. Um, Another thing that's really cool about Coco is Electric Ball. It does 100 damage for essentially two energies, assuming you use Thunder uh, Thunder Valley or Thunder Mountain Prism Star, whatever. I call it Thunder Valley. I don't know. I like it, that <laughs> name. Um, but you get to hit 100 with uh, Electric Power hits 130. So that's how you can counter uh, Buzzwell, uh, like coming into play, assuming he's going to hit on the fourth prize turn, which typically happens for Zap Beast because the deck's so consistent. Uh, mm -hmm. So it gives you an uh, easier out to that, um, as well as other attackers in that in the Definitely. archetype. Yeah. I, so it's not so a bad card. I was I was judging in the event that Harrison did better at on Sunday. And it, it was it was beautiful to just kind of, like, I, I walked behind him and saw his hand, and I was like, oh, I see that Coco. I see an energy. He had the other Coco, Coco Prism, in his hand as well, and I was just like, "Well, I know what's about to happen, but his opponent doesn't know." <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about when I came in on the Buzzwool, right? Yeah. With the Electric Power, yeah. So it's like I, you know, bench bench Coco, and then block the energies. Boom. Well, you, you benched him, and I think you attached one energy. And then, like, the oh, following Thunder turn, Mountain. it was like, you bench the Prism Coco, oh. activate, yeah. and attach another energy, and then you're just like, bam in the face. Yep. And I even had the, uh, I had Jirachi active, because he knocked out my, uh, active, uh, Zapdos of Memory Surfs. Yep. Yeah, it was fun. It's a good time. Coco's good. Uh, <laughs> like, every form of Coco is good. Like, there, there is only one bad Coco, and that's like that random one that came out in the set yeah but we're getting but, but we're like four, uh three of the four that we have now are just busted and then we're gonna have four of five that are just, just gonna be really solid definitely yeah. all right so moving on to the other coco just briefly because everyone's familiar with the coco prism and the gx so we're just gonna touch touch base real quick for anyone living under a yep. rock dance of the ancients is like 99 point what six percent of the use of this card yeah uh, like there's very seldom do you need to use him as an attacker but he's actually good in the zapdos mirror because mm -hmm. they need two electric powers to knock him out so what you can essentially do is uh you know attach 
attach on one of your turns that you need or that you have available to you. Uh, attach the second Thunder Mountain, and then you can mock bolt into pretty much whatever. Take your prize, and then they have to return knock that out with, you know, a fighting attacker, or you know, they're gonna have to find two electro powers, which is a lot harder to do um, than most people expect. Yeah. Uh, and then he can come back off the to the bench with an escape rope or you know whatever your switching card is, and then put an energy, extra energy into play. Uh, but just taking that extra prize and not being at risk to die to a single electric power is really big. Definitely. And then, of course, the final and, Coco is the GX, yeah. who has... Free. Yeah, he's, Plus he's, he's got so many good things about him. The arrow trail ability, uh, because there are times when, you know, people are sniping your type nulls, or for whatever reason you can't use the free retreat ability, or Jirachi's asleep, and you don't have... Yeah an escape or switching card, an escape board done. or switching yeah. card. And Coco's just like, hey, is there energy? Okay, I got this. Hold my beer. He flies in there, takes up all the energy, and he can attack. Um, from out of nowhere, you can Oko, and I, I remember seeing this at least once, uh, Oko a tag team, because, you know, what do tag teams do? <laughs> yeah. They need energy, right? You, they get enough energy in play, and you're just like, ha. Oh, uh, using the GX it's attack. such a hard counter, like, like, just it's so good against tag teams, and just the existence of this card's crazy. Um, it's such a great punish, and I don't think people play it well enough in the mirror. I think like a lot of Zapdos players keep too many energies in play, and then when they do their cap Tapu Koko, they have like three or four energies in play, and then. They just get punished with the opponent's Tapu Koko. And then they'll just swoop in and just do their own GX attack with a single, like, three or less energies. They're just gonna need one choice band or one electric power, and then they take the win because you're taking single price trades back and forth. And the last two prizes are huge. So that actually leads into one of the plays you made yesterday that was just <laughs> it was awesome. pretty. It was pretty dope. I liked it. It was fun. Yeah. Do you want to tell the story? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was game two of finals, and the uh, I had three energies on my active Coco, and I was at two prizes. My opponent was at was he at one at that point? I think. Yeah, he was at one prize. And was, oh, okay, I was thinking he, he was at two at that point as well, but I think I think he was at one because that was like the turn before. Okay. Uh, he did all the dig, uh, big plays, the digging. Um, but I had three energy on Coco and one, and the Thunder Mountain was in play. I don't know if it was mine or my opponent's. It's kind of irrelevant. Yeah. But uh, I attached an extra basic energy from my hand uh, to the Coco, and then uh, I retreated for the two. Uh, so leaving two energies on the Coco, and then I played Guzma to take uh, knock myself down to one prize. So it was one prize each. Um, and I, I did do a let loose and some other things like that this turn. So like, I kind of forced a lot of options. I think I knocked out his last Zapdos if memory serves. Um, that sounds right. And so he needed to find essentially a Coco GX. Uh, he had played Shrine that turn, but ultimately what my thought process was, I need to isolate how many energies I have in play. So that way he needs to find a, several power up cards essentially. Because if he just had, um, if he didn't draw the shrine, he would have needed to find two, well, he would need to find shrine and a power up card or two power ups being electric power or choice band mm -hmm. uh, by only, only having one energy, sorry, two energies in play. By having that one less, I take 50 less damage. So uh, I, I think a lot of players don't counterplay that enough yeah. when they go into the Coco turn. It was the it was the biggest brain play I could make. Like the deck's fairly <laughs> simple, but like well, sometimes it, people don't what, think what about circumstances. What I love your opponent because it was a, a Zapdos mirror, right? Your opponent is just like, okay, there goes my uh, my game plan because he he was clearly like counting on you having a Coco with the three energy. Three. And like yeah. as soon as he did it, he's like, good play. <laughs> yeah, he was like, good play. <laughs> I was like. 
I mean, what else do I want to do? Do I want to just leave Strap Coco in a choice man? Like, yeah. nah, I'm good. <laughs> you have four Electro Powers left in your deck. I don't want to lose to that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, rounding out the Pokemon, I think everyone knows the Zap Zaps. Yep. Hit for 80 as long as you've been on the bench at the start of the turn. And Electro Power makes that a big number. Uh, we've, in the chat, we've got somebody asking about uh, doesn't playing Coco GX in the mirror just give up a free two prizes? Uh, if you play it too early. You want it to be your last knockout or your last two knockouts. So, a lot of the times you want to, like... It kind of depends on how many Electro Powers you've had to play and how many baby, or like little babies they have in play. Um, and how many Electro Powers they, or Power-Up cards that they have played. And how many energies you have in play. So you have to account for all of the potentials that they have. And have they used their Coco? Is their Coco available to them? Is it in the discard pile? How many stretchers have they played? Uh, so you just have to look at a lot of those factors and decide if it's going to be what you need to play in your like next to last turn. Uh, or not, and how many prizes have been taken, because a lot of the times in the Ditto, uh, or in the Mirror, rather, uh, one of the two players is going to whiff on a, a knockout. It's not a guarantee, but a lot of the times it can happen. Uh, but whoever takes the first prize that can continue to take prizes, and doesn't have to put a GX into play, will win that matchup. It's unfortunate that it's like just down to consistency and who draws better and gets the first knockout, but you know it's the nature of uh, nature of the beast. Sure. I mean, mirror ma mirror matches in general are going to come down to some of that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so rounding rounding things out from there, we've got two ability Pokemon, Jirachi, of course, to Stellar Wish in the top five cards, and uh, Marshadow with the let loose ability that everybody yeah. was, it was, it was a big subject <laughs> of discussion during that finals match. Oh, it was so funny. Cause it's, it's literally what lost me that finals. Like I got marshadowed out of like two playable hands into two, like both hands. I had like three energies and like a Coco prism or like uh, three energies and a zip striker and a, at a stretcher like it was just not good like it was sad it was like I, I couldn't do anything it was awful but it is what it is it's nature of the beast like Marshadow is just so good and it just creates circumstances like that which is fine like it's it's both a necessary evil and like a really poor like design all in all but it's what we have to do with so it's good to get, good to have it good to play it uh, if you have the ability to, if you're not playing greens or something like that, I think it's something that it's a uh, it's a necessary evil. Well, and you wouldn't want to play like you'd have to change everything about this list to play greens. So that's... Oh yeah, no, I was just saying for in general for like Marshadow in general. If you're if you're playing the greens engine, you can't play Marshadow sure. effectively. Yeah, like you can play it, but it's not going to be as effective. And then rounding things out, just running through real quick. Um, I'll, I'll talk. I'll ask you about a couple counts as we go through here, but yeah. I think it's pretty standard. Every yeah. list that plays Zapdos as an attacker needs to play four Electric Power. Just bump up that damage tank. Yeah. You know, go from being yeah, able to take out, out unevolved basics to being able to actually, you know, take down some heavy hitters. Uh, it it the makes the math work. It helps you. Like, if you played less, you would lose the map, uh, mirror matchup. Like, absolutely. You would just straight up lose. If you played three, you would lose. Like, I, I think you, I don't think you would win any of them unless you have, like, a really crazy alternative attackers. Like, uh, uh, what's it called? Stunk Fisk or something like that. Sure. So we've got but even four... then, you'd still want four electric powers. Uh, I don't think there's any argument that you want to do that. Oh. It, it's pl it's plus power from base set. Like you played four, <laughs> like there's no doubt. Uh, four nest ball. Four nest like balls. you need the most consistency. Absolutely. Because uh, of no, the only Pokemon that we have that you don't, you're not happy about nest balling for are Marshadow and Mar Captain Coco GX. Okay. So yep. uh, those would be the only reasons that you potentially want an Ultra Ball over a nest ball. And there's one of those too. 
Uh, we've got one rescue stretcher, and I guess I'll ask you about the count there. Um, same logic that I've always had in this game. Uh, if you're not knocking out or taking the six prizes with all of your normal attackers, then you're gonna lose. And so I don't think you need three stretchers. So essentially, like mathematically, I have um, I have Savali, three Zapdos, and Coco GX. Those are five prizes that I can take, essentially, right? Sure. I would only need one more back with Stretcher. And they're not always going to take single knockouts. Mm -hmm. um, but if they do, and I need to play the uh, long, drawn-out Zapdos mirror match where we just knock each other's Pokemon out, Zapdos isn't always the one Pokemon that's getting knocked out. It's always the Jirachis, because they're more concerned about blowing down the setup, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, and so you're maintaining attackers at that point. So you don't need to get as many Pokemon back. So uh, I feel like if you played more stretchers, you're just going to draw into more hands where you just have stretcher and you're just like, well, I can't do anything with this. Yeah. Especially early game when you need to draw with Lily and stuff. You're just, you don't want to see stretcher early game. You want to see early game. Um, so that's, that's the rationale behind the one stretcher. Makes sense. Uh, we've got so so here's where we depart a little bit from some of the more standard oh boy do builds, we right we have two switches and zero escape ropes yup but that's because the valley is the bomb he absolutely is like gyro unit dude like i don't i can rotate between zapdos for free yep <laughs> like i don't need to dig for anything so, realistically, the two switches are there if I don't have the Guzma or the setup to get Savali out of the active or the other Pokemon out of the active. There are certain circumstances when you just pop a, need to pop a switch, that's why the two switches are there. Yep. You don't always have to have it, but exactly. it's there if you need it. Um, or if you need a multiple Jirachi search for uh, supporter first turn or something like that. And then we do, of course, have the three escape boards for Jirachi. Um, yeah, three three is a good count. Uh, four is a little hefty. Um, I didn't feel comfortable enough with two, which is when I ran on Saturday. Uh, three felt a lot better. I got uh, the skateboard a lot more when I had Jirachi in play, uh, when I had the three three count. Mm -hmm. I like it. It just felt a lot better. And then going back, but five through. switching cards outside of uh, the four Guzma. So nine switching options, not counting Savelli. Yeah. And four Ultra Ball. Did you feel like you needed the four here? I guess it helps. I did in addition actually. To, in addition to so the what that out. allowed was uh, it allowed for another search card to uh, dig into Savelli, mm -hmm. as well as another dig option for Coco GX, uh, as well as I have the evolution line with Substrika. That's um, true, that's true. I, I, I mentioned just the, the needing to use the bench abilities with Marshadow and, and Coco GX, but, but yeah, the getting the evolution lines is something I wasn't thinking and, about, and you definitely need all mm -hmm. four Ultra Balls with that in mind. No, yeah. Yep. And also, in certain matchups, you don't need the memory cards, or you don't want certain memory cards. Sure. And so it's a good way to just ditch them out of your hand. Uh, and even if you go with a build that doesn't use uh, Zipstrika, so say you take out the Zipstrika engine and you put in extra Marshadow and Jirachi or something like that, if you're more inclined to run a four count of Jirachi, um, you can uh, uh, just, you know have another way to actually discard the memory cards with Ultra Ball. Yep. Um, of course, we've got the Thunder Mountain. Busted card. Oh, absolutely. Bust. Letting letting all your lightning Pokemon attack for one less lightning energy, huge. Free attacks on a freaking eighty damage Pokemon, like free. That's so good. Yeah. A GX attack for two energies, like good good night. So good. So, like, what about sweet. other stadiums? Um, so there is. I like the thought of using Viridian. Uh, even though you're not playing a variety of energy, I think Viridian's good because it's both a discard outlet. Uh, and also, it's if you're say that you're gonna hand or you have a handful of Pokemon and trainers, 
and you need an energy to attack with uh, Coco, I think that having the option to dig, like if you use Stellar Wish with Jirachi, uh, it gives you an option to dig for an energy. Some people play Energy Lotto if they're running rainbows and stuff. I think that Viridian Forest is definitely a counter stadium that you can play. Sure, for sure. sure. And there were some times that I was in games that I saw yesterday where yeah. you needed some counter stadiums. Power Plant hurt. Yeah. Power Plant was burning me because there was like turns where I really wanted to just like I had Coco in hand. I had Prism Prism Star. I had GX Coco in hand. And it's just like I can't rush. I can't rush in. I I, I don't have Aero Trail available to me because of Power Plant. Yeah. And uh, and I also didn't have Gyro Unit available, so I, like I didn't have the pivots and stuff. So it was Do pretty you rough. Know what you would take out in order to fit in some more counter stadiums? It's really hard, but like some of the flex spots that you might have could be potentially say like. You, I could see you taking one energy, basic energy out for a Viridian. Uh, I think Vulcaner is also another option that you could have for a counter stadium. Uh, the Blitzel Zip Strike aligns something else. That's a flex spot uh, that could work. Um, you could potentially even cut one of the double colorless energies if you're feeling a little frisky. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of flex spots. There's a lot of versatility that you have with this list. Um, and like, you don't have to run the Coco Flying Flip. Uh, I just felt like it was good for the meta. Uh, so I decided to try it out and run it. Um, but yeah, there's there's so much that you can do with this list. Uh, you could even like, meta dependent, you could just run three of one memory card and then have like, that'd be another option mm -hmm. to you. So like, uh, like for example, on Saturday, absolutely nobody played Reshizard. There was not one uh, at the event. There was like four Zoroarks, like three Zap Beast, and then everything else was like... Actually, no, there was six... I take that back, there was six Zoroark decks. And then no Fire, and like everything else was Picarom. So I could have been like three Fighting Memory and like no Water Memory, and then I'd have been fine. Like yeah. that particular... Like it's it's all dependent on your meta. Like if you have like a small cup challenge, and you only have like seven players, ten players, and you pretty much know what everyone likes to play, you could counterplay that that way so i think at a local level this deck is absolutely bonkers like you could you can punish your friends for what they <laughs> what they play <laughs> like you have a friend you invite a friend over and say hey you want to play some pokemon and you can be like oh i know what he's gonna play i'm gonna put these memory cards in really quick oh my buddy's gonna be playing blastoise all right don't, don't mind me grass memory um <laughs> <laughs> like it's super dumb um yeah, no, I think there's a lot of flexibility in the list, uh, all in all. But uh, yeah, Counter Stadium is definitely something that could be done. Uh, I think the new Marshadow could be really good too. Sure. Yeah. Uh, just popping stadiums is going to be really good. That came up when I could have been playing against uh, the top four on Saturday when I was up against the Vikavolt deck, because that's a way to deal with uh, other Prism Star stadiums. Yep, I didn't see that game. Uh, oh, it was well, nuts, dude. It. Yeah, it was so... Dude, Vickable, that matchup, oh my goodness gracious, dude. It was... I was, like, one card off of knocking out his last Vickable in play, both game one and game two. Oh. And... It was, like, the stadium was in play, and I had Fighting Memory on the Valai. I've already used Coco GX to knock out one of his Vickavolts, like, his next to last Vickavolt. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have any power modifiers to get up to the 150 necessary. And so I could only energy drive, or, uh, yeah, it's called it, turbo drive, sorry, um, for 120 because he had stadium in place, so his Vickable had no weakness. Um, and so I could only hit 120, not 150, uh, which was rough. And I had everything. I got, like, I got Marshadow, like, I just, you know, no counter stadium, so I didn't have any way to get over the, the hump. And he was just able to attack me the following turn, so it was just a sad time. Yeah, I hear that. Uh, okay, so 
now we're on to the Fort Guzma count, yeah, or Lily count. Do like, you think there's any room for adjustment in the supporter lineup here, or do you think that's pretty much set? Um, lightning? I honest, I'll be real. I think the Volkner and Choice Band could be very easily switched. I don't think Choice Band's absolutely necessary, but I think it's pretty good. Um, but it's not as viable when you're playing Savali because he's gonna have a memory attached. Mm -hmm. And Coco, like assuming you're going for a uh, Tapu Thunder against like a big big body. So say your Reshiram Charizard player has five energies in play, you just as well have the option to use Tapu Thunder with one Electro Power. Uh, so I feel like, and the math overall is gonna be fine. If you attack a, a tag team with a Zapdos, put them down 80 damage, they're gonna be under 200, so then you either have Rebel for 200, assuming they have four Pokemon on the bench, or if they have four energies, Tapu Thunder is going to take the knockout there as well. So I don't think Choice Band's as critical mm -hmm. uh, long term in this mat or in this deck. Uh, a Zoroark player is going to have a full bench anyway, uh, so you don't even need a Choice Band uh, yeah. to use Rebel to knock to take the knockout. And even in that matchup, you still have oops, uh, you have the. Um, the fighting memory just to take the knockout with the uh, turbo drive. So then you're saying you you could strongly consider dropping to no choice band and two Volkner? Uh, or Kukui or whatever okay. other option. I think Kukui could be a better option oh, long term yeah. if you're wanting to do that. I think Volkner is good for consistency, but I think as far as power plays, Kukui is better for it. Sure, definitely. Okay, and um, so I guess the final thing to talk about. We sort of already talked about it, but counts on the, the memories. You went with a 2-2 two -two split here, basically to be prepared for hitting, fighting into like Picaram or Zork meta. And hitting as well as uh, water the into... tag team for Snorlax Eevee. Yep. Um, because I don't think... Snorlax Eevee is fighting week two. I don't think that we need to belabor that point. We already touched on it quite a bit um so i guess we'll wrap up before we get into some of the matchups we will wrap up and uh with talking about energy so here yeah. you played 40 ce and seven lightning you said yeah. on saturday you played the triple acceleration energy instead of the dc was that a, a four seven count as well yep it was a four seven as well okay what would you? I guess. I, what would what would you base the decision on? Which way to go there? I know if you're gonna play the um, flying flip Coco, you have to play the DC version. Yep. But otherwise, what you're makes going that with call? the TAE uh, triple acceleration build? Uh, yeah, you take the Coco out. Uh, you could definitely add like another Jirachi or some other consistency engine. Um, but like it, it really kind of like I think that the GCE build long term is better. Okay. Because double colorless is just a retreat engine for like let's just say you get a Zapdos stuck in the active, you don't have a Savelli in play, that turns into a switch for you. True. Um so I think and like the energy itself is more utility on everything. Uh, I think if you like a high count of Volkner and you use triple acceleration energy, you could run an energy lotto mm -hmm. uh, to kind of dig for that. Because uh, a lot of the times, pretty much what you're going to do is you're going to have a Titan Null just sitting on the bench. And then, like, if you're running the double colorless build, you get two Titan Nulls on the bench. You arrow, or not arrow trailed, you um, dance of the ancients, put one lightning on each of them. And then you can kind of just sit there and be like, all right. Volta Savali, Memory Card, DCE, Guzma, hit whatever tag team or whatever that I need to, or, you know, promote him. Then you do your, if you're playing Kukui, you do that. Uh, then you knock out their tag team that they just had up in front. Uh, so you kind of just sit with the cards that you need to, um, and then you just unload in one turn. That way you're not risking the, uh, the two prizes that uh, Savali has. But alternatively, if you're in like another matchup where your Savali is safe, you can just play Savali and then have the gyro unit available to you um, and just have him in play and then you can just like slow attach to him and like leave a DC on there and then just like 
attachments, like slow attach to him if you need to. Um, but yeah, that's like the deck has flexibility. It's like how Zorark was previously in last format. I think this deck has that same amount of flexibility and has like a lot of meta implications. So I think this is one of the best decks for locals. Yeah, I, I like it because. Uh, in in local specifically because you know more or less what to tech for. Exactly. It's so fun. Like I, I think everyone should give this a shot because it's just it's just straight up a fun list. It's so fun. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, let's. Uh, I guess we'll round things out talking about the important matchups. So. Uh, first, okay. on, a, on a broad spectrum, what do you think the good and bad matchups? Like, like what are your best matchups? What are your worst matchups? Uh, best matchups, Zorark. Any Zorark variant. It doesn't matter. Even if they play, like, two Alolan Mucks, Alert. you don't care. I apologize about the message there. Um, <laughs> that's my phone here. Um, I think your best matchup is Zorark free. Um... So, assuming, because they two shot you in like almost every way, uh, assuming you're still Valley out, right? Mm -hmm. Early game, you're picking off their baby basics with Zapdos. Um, you have the memory cards to take big knockouts on Persian and on uh, Zorark. They're not going to be able to establish a strong board. Um, if they put a Lolan Muck into play, uh, you still have pivots off of Jirachis, even though you can't use his ability. Uh, you can still retreat out of that. Uh, Zorark's not going to play Power Plant, so they're not going to turn off uh, Arrow Trail or Gyro Unit. Definitely. Um, so you just like, you outpace them dramatically. They commit to the board so much with their Pokemon in play, so you can get an uh, easy knockout with uh, Rebel, even if you don't get the memory card. Uh, they sometimes need to attach multiple energies into play, so you can even get a big knockout with like two power up cards and uh, Tapu Thunder. Um, assuming they're running like uh, you know a basic energy engine, like uh, unit energy and like so, or like rock or something like that, and then a double colorless in play. So there's a lot of times they have to preemptively attach. Um, they're two shotting uh, Savali, and very seldom are they going to one shot a Tepu Koko. Uh, sure. Typically, they would do that with a Persian. Uh, but yeah, you just win that matchup uh, super hard. Um, another decent matchup. Uh, is the uh, Firebox, uh, the Volcanian, the uh, Reshizard, the, the uh, Snorlax Eevee. Yeah, I didn't expect um, that to go as well as it did for you. When I, I watched it on Sunday, I was kind of like, wait a minute, Harrison's actually it's, like, running this. It's pretty decent. Like, So, just like your normal fire matchup, you're going to be able to... You know, just tap your thunder for a big knockout. Uh, you get some preemptive damage with uh, Zapdos on anything, and essentially they're gonna have to ace roll of that target back, or else you're going to come back in with a uh, a turbo drive for a super effective typing against either Snorlax or uh, Charizard. Because uh, you and like if you're running the Kukui build, you can one shot them, so you don't have to worry about like revenge from Charizard or whatever for outright. Um, but yeah, it's just like all in all, like you're a consistent deck that has power hits and you're taking, or they're taking two prizes to your three and you also like the player that I played against, um, on Sunday, he had, he was playing it perfect. Like, he was using Baby Volks, maintaining four energies in play, hitting 110 onto Jirachis and Zapdos. Well, 210 on Jirachis, but... Um, he's taking the easy knockouts on those Pokemon and kind of just maintaining pressure, because it's really hard for you to one-shot those. But the counterplay to that is just using uh, Turbo Drive. Yeah. It does 120. You don't have to have a memory attached. You're pressuring the Volcanian player to put multiple energies into play, and then when they, after you, you know, take a one or two knockouts with the uh, of the baby Volks, 
they're having to commit to their uh, big GX, right? So I'm essentially going to be knocking out two uh, baby Vulcanians. Then they're going to be promoting either the Snorlax or the Reshazard. And then you come in, they're going to be at three or uh, three or four prizes uh, taken. And then you come in with uh, Aero Trail, GX uh, with Tapu Thunder, knock out, take three prizes, you have one left. They're not going to be able to come down with an energy attachment. Like, in theory, if they held onto their GX attack for uh, Restroom Charizard, they could come in and counter KO with their GX attack with a single attachment and a, uh, a welder. But they've been needing to uh, use their uh, welders to maintain the pressure with the Vulcanians. So a lot of the times, if you let loose the turn that you take the three prizes and they have to come back in, uh, they're not going to have that option as often available to them. Um, and so then they just have a baby Vulcan play and then you just knock it out with the Sky High Claws and you're good. Uh, that's your six prizes because you took the two, first two baby Volks and then you take the three from the tag team and then you just knock out a baby and then you're good. That makes sense. So what about bad matchups? Bad matchups, I honestly think that Baby Clowns is one that's probably one of the worst yeah, currently. Yeah, I can see that. Um, the other one I think is Weezing. Okay. Um, it really depends on how hot the Weezing player starts. I think if they get all of the Weezing in, like two or three Weezing into play in the first two or three turns, I think they straight up win. Hmm. Um, and I think it's kind of hard. Like, in theory, you might be able to win the matchup if you can get a power plant or not power plant. Um, if you want to run Lysander Labs, which is really sure. weird because you're playing memory cards too. But I think if you wanted to, if you're playing against in a stall heavy meta like uh, the uh, Shininja deck with the Ranguru, uh, oh, yeah. you could run. Uh, you could potentially run Lysander Labs to counter that. Uh, you could also la use Labs against Baby Blacephalon to stop Batons, but I think the most relevant one it would be to use that against uh, Weezing because of how powerful Spell Tag is against this deck. Um, but I, like, I don't think you really want to like counter that matchup. I don't think that's something you really want to go for. Same thing with uh, Baby Blacephalon. I think you want to focus on what you think the meta is, which yeah. is the, like our big three. Which is other Zapdos decks, um, which I think is still a 50 50. Um, I think you're just not, you're looking to not play against most stall variants. You're not looking to play against Squeezing, and I think you're not looking to play against Baby Blacephalon. But I think you're great against Reshiram Charizard. I think you're great against Silver Arc. I think you're pretty decent in that, uh, like most of the rogue matchups. Um, I think, oh yeah, you, you flat out win against Pikaram. Um, so like you have three really great matchups in the three more favored decks right now, and then you have a decent Zapdos matchup, and then rogue matchups. It just really depends on what that rogue deck is. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so we talked. You talked a bit in there about the baby Blacephalon decks. What about the uh, Blacephalon GX? Oh, decks? Big, 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 big poppy baby daddy. Yeah. Um, I think you're favorable in that one. I really do. Um, you take early prizes against the Poipoles. Um, you also, you get to play a single prizer style deck up until they have multiple Blacephalons in play. And then you can just take two GX knockouts and you win. Mm -hmm. um, so in like, that kind of like target priority is a lot easier for you than it is for them because they're gonna need to use like welders and draw supporters to kind of build their board. Mm -hmm. And so their supporters aren't targeting down like your Jirachis and stuff. So you're able to set up a lot faster than they are. Um, you don't have to get memories, water memory in that matchup, but you very well can. Sure. And then just take a big knockout easily without much commitment. And then they need four energies to do that. They need three energies to take out a Zapdos. And like it's just you praise uh, you you trade favorably in that. that makes sense. Okay. Um, coming back to the energy. And that's not theory. I've played it against that a couple of times. It's it's pretty okay. <laughs> coming back to the memory question briefly, just because 
I'm sorry, the, I said memory, I meant energy. Um, yeah. Just because it's been discussed a little bit more in chat on both our channels. Uh, one thing that occurred to me is that it might center around whether you think Savali is going to be your attacker every turn or you think that Savali is going to come in as a helper, given your take yeah, on your it's, meta. It's a preference thing. I really do think that. Um, I think that the consistency element, like, if I was playing Triple Acceleration Energy in that Volcanian matchup, for example, uh, I wouldn't be able to take consecutive knockouts with the same active Savali. Because it I'd be dropping makes... off that Triple Acceleration and I would have to dig for another one. Yeah. Also, Double uh, double Colorless allows you to have a retreat. Like, pre-rotation, I think there's little to no reason to play Triple. Post-rotation, Triple's fine. I think you're good. Sure. It's also worth noting, too, because you had to do this a couple of times, uh, the the DCE can go on to the Coco GX. Yeah, DCE on to... Are you talking yeah. about the GX Coco? Yeah, Coco GX. So you can go on to him. Uh, yeah, it, it gives you an... So like, you can't triple acceleration onto Coco G. Exactly. So if, if, if you straight up replace the 4 DCE with 4 uh, triple acceleration, you're not going to be able to... Worked. To have that as the last energy of Koga GX, yep. And there are going to be situations where you could attack with him and you know pull off a Tapu Thunder knockout that you can't do because the only energy you have in hand is triple. Yep. And it's harder, and you can't attach it, so you can't empty your hand for like a Lily or uh, produce your cards in your hand when you're digging for a particular option with uh, Marshadow or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so when you do like your shuffle draw, like it doesn't deck then as much. Definitely. Yeah. I, I I like playables. Uh, I think that's the focus that Zapdos has. Uh, it's just a lot of playables are good in circum like in most circumstances. I think that helps out a lot. Definitely. I agree. Okay. Um, are there any other matchups that we need to talk about or anything um, else you want to add? Blastoise is not good. <laughs> <laughs> it's super not good. And I've played uh, uh, two uh, PTCGO tournaments, just like those single limb bracket things. Right. And both both times I've played against Blastoise in the finals. Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm like... Well, uh, I'm gonna take out this choice man. I'm gonna put in a grass, uh, grass memory just, to, uh, just to take that <laughs> matchup. <laughs> it's super funny. Like Blastoise is really tough for Zapdos, I think. And which even, like, even that, with... that deck, people are sleeping on that deck, man. Dude, I know. Gosh, I know. Dude, it's Blastoise awesome. Is nuts. I love it. Blastoise is nuts. I, I I made Nate take it on Saturday, and then he. Wanted to play something else on Sunday, and it went better. So I guess there's that. But, but <laughs> I, I think I think people just need to find a build for it. Yeah. I, I think that uh, it's just nobody's sat with like it's a stage two deck. People don't like sitting through stage two decks. Yeah. But like right now, I think right now is the optimal time. Like it's not going to be ideal post rotation. I don't no. think unless like you find a really good engine for it. Like I have a couple of ideas. That could work. Well, we'll and talk I about that. Could... We'll talk about that <laughs> later. Not yeah, on the another video. Day, but like, yeah, no, Blastoise is a hard matchup. Play uh, Grass Memory if you have Blastoise in your meta. Then well, you should be fine. So even with even with Grass Memory though, they're gonna have their right. ability. Right. I'm just saying like that's gonna be one of your potential options to, to do it because like otherwise it's gonna be really hard to knock out the baby uh, uh, Blastoise because that, that's what you okay. got. You have to prioritize knocking that out. Okay, that makes sense. Because that's their that's their win con. All right. What was well, that? Uh, that was it. That, uh, I think we'll go ahead and wrap up for this interview, 